I was looking at the Falconeers page on the Xbox store, and as I read the one and two star reviews, I started to feel bad. This game was created by one person, Thomas Sala, after being burnt out as a developer for hire. The Falcon flying away, Thomas admits, a metaphor for him being free in his working life. And for me personally, as someone who generally wants the underdog to succeed, I came up with a plan. I'd review the Falconeer and defend it against the harsh criticism I'd seen online. But as you've probably guessed from the title of this review, that's not what happened. Because the Falconeer is one of the most frustrating games I've ever played. Maybe even the most frustrating game I've ever played. And even though it is beautiful, it is fundamentally flawed in everything it tries to achieve. Its mission structure is a mess, its systems are unnecessary, and even the combat which does have its moments isn't enough. I mean, look at the stats. At the time of recording, only 0.5% of people finish the game on Xbox. Which you know is fine, as we don't complete every game we start. But what about this? Only 2% of people have finished the first chapter. So with this shocking figure in mind, let me explain how the Falconeer has clipped the wings of what could have been an incredible experience. This is the Ursi, an oceanic world where pockets of civilization live isolated out at sea. The Ursi isn't your typical open world, as most of the map is filled with water, probably most similar to something like Sea of Thieves. But instead of being able to drop your anchor and explore on dry land, we fly through the air only landing to visit outposts, where we pick up missions and buy new gear. I think the first thing to say about the Ursi is that it's visually stunning. Its art style uses vibrant colours that invites you to get lost in every frame. There were so many times I'd forget what I was supposed to be doing because I was in awe of this world, often flying upwards just to see the stars glistening overhead. The Ursi is also a world rich with lore and ripe for exploration. At Shard, a group of jagged rocks extend out of the sea, thought to have formed when old gods threw their spears from the heavens, whereas the Moor is a gigantic ocean trench that splits the map in two, its origin never explained. Although these places add a sense of mystery to the world, everything is entirely believable. The smallest of details like sawmills, breweries and forges are here to hint at the economics of the Ursi and to make its population feel real. Bafflingly though, the economy is used for major plot points. Early missions involve the profits from a local mine, and in one mission there's a dispute between factions when a trade license isn't renewed. Think the setting of Game of Thrones crossed with the Trade Federation talks from Attack of the Clones. It's not exactly exhilarating, is it? Things do improve in later chapters, where you uncover a portal to another dimension, but the Falconeer should have led with its strongest foot forward, rather than falling flat at the very first hurdle. Maybe I'm being harsh, as similar to other games, these basic objectives are here to push us out into the world. But the problem is, apart from a few interesting things to see, the Ursi is basic in design. Everything is too far apart, with miles of airspace filled only by a lone aircraft or the odd whale jumping out of the ocean. This means exploration is the worst type, where we simply go from point A to point B, and that's it. I do get what the Falconeer is going for here, as these moments are designed to be relaxing as we glide uninterrupted over the sea and admire the visuals. And at times, I did have that almost meditative-like experience that you find in games like Breath of the Wild, or even smaller games like Deliver Us the Moon, where we roam across its lunar landscape in complete silence. But the difference in the Falconeer is that this is the game, rather than an addition on top of already solid mechanics. If Deliver Us the Moon made us travel into space for every objective, its impact would quickly wear thin. And if Breath of the Wild didn't have its interesting exploration mechanics, it would be a chore to play. The Falconeer doesn't understand this as we constantly return to these long, endless sections over and over with no variation. The missions also insist on having long flying sections where it's common to fly for five minutes across the map before the mission actually starts. And to make matters worse, there are escort missions where we fly overhead following a boat. We can't skip these either, so we literally watch the boat slowly creep forwards. But there are even bigger issues, as the Falconeer has one of the most egregious levelling systems I've ever seen. Every chapter has a recommended range of levels, so before you move on to the next set of missions, you're supposed to level up from side content in the open world. And let's just say, if the main missions are repetitive, they are nothing compared to the side missions. There's bounty missions, where you fly across the map, 
literally kill one enemy and fly back, or cartographer missions where you fly somewhere and then fly back. The amount of XP each mission gives out is also a joke. Shrine harassment missions, for example, gave me one eighth of my XP bar, meaning I had to repeat them eight times just to level up once. I think if you alternate missions here, you get more XP, but as the other missions are so poor, I do anything to avoid playing them. I'm not even sure this is true, as the Falconeer never explains anything. I mean, there was one moment when I realised just how flawed this game was, when I was stuck on an encounter because I kept running out of ammo. Now, the only way to refill your reserves is by flying into a storm or picking up ammo dropped from enemies. But because I had no ammo left, I couldn't damage an enemy to make them drop ammo. I needed ammo to get ammo. So my only option was to find a storm, but the nearest storm was outside the objective area, which is fine. I'll just fly over to it, fly back and beat the mission. So I did that. I flew to the storm and refilled my ammo. But when I returned to the area, I realised the encounter had reset and I was back at square one. So I tried one more time, ran out of ammo again, flew back to the storm again, refilled, flew back to the objective area for another attempt, and then I died. I turned off my Xbox and I was so mad, I honestly thought about scrapping this review. There was just no need for ammo to work this way, and I think the Falconeer is trying to be too clever, where everything has to make sense. The storms, the economics, the lore. But as gamers, we accept certain mechanics don't make sense if it creates better gameplay. For example, I'm playing Control at the moment, which removes the reload button and has its guns recharge automatically. The devs are basically saying to us, don't worry about monitoring your ammo, just focus on the combat and have fun. The Falconeer needed something like this, that focuses on fun, rather than having every T crossed and I dotted. And even though I really don't like this game, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a lot of good here, because there is. There's epic boss fights against giant crabs, a wide variety of enemies like manta rays, beetles and flying eels, and I love the soundtrack, which uses traditional instruments like bagpipes and Mongolian throat singing, all tied together with cinematic pounding drums. All of this is great, but like elsewhere it's just not enough. The combat needs more, more weapons, more ammo, or even a melee ability using our bird's talons. The lack of a bomb weapon is also a missed opportunity, as there's no chance of a Death Star style bombing run. The more was even perfect for this, but it's never used other than for a few stealth missions. I mean, you can swoop down to grab bombs from the sea, but they're so clunky to aim it's not worth the effort. But the biggest issue with the combat is that it's been gutted by the decision to make it numbers based rather than skill based, where you'll die in a few hits if your level is too low. Having this system is fine for RPGs or MMOs where gear and levelling are main parts of the game, but using it here was the wrong decision. Skill is what makes these games addictive, as we master the controls and become more proficient in combat, manoeuvring our ship through tight spaces to lose the enemy, or using loop the loops to get the drop on someone are both incredible experiences. But we can't do any of that here. We can't even rotate our bird horizontally or come back on ourselves vertically. And because the controls are so restrictive, it means that every combat space is designed to be as open as possible. But this just means that every encounter feels the same, as we're most always fighting in open air over open water. Any game with combat needs obstacles to add tension, cover to hide behind or different routes to flank the enemy. We do sometimes have that in the Falconeer, like when we fight near rocks, which adds a bit of strategy, as you can dart behind the rocks to heal, but it's still not quite enough due to the controls. If we get too close to the rocks, for example, our bird bounces off them like he's made of rubber. You know, when I was playing the Falconeer, I kept thinking about that famous quote from Todd Howard, great games are played, not made. Because on paper, the Falconeer is a great game. It has an amazing art style and a unique premise. But when you actually sit down to play it, it's a complete disaster. It's long, drawn out, and filled with padding that should have been cut. 
Having a four hour experience packed with quality is always better than having 10 hours filled with repetition. The Falconeer should have been four hours long. And I feel bad saying that because I know everyone who worked on this game is talented and I'm still in awe at this world that was created by one person. But all of the effort that went into designing the lore, making sure everything is realistic and developing pointless RPG systems should have been put in the places that matter. And quite frankly, without these pointless systems or the frustrating mission structure, the Falconeer would have been left to truly fly free. <laughs> <laughs>